Oil man T. Boone Pickens, he has died. The host of Commodities Edge and Bloomberg Daybreak America's Alex Steele joins us now for her very own perspective of a man who is deemed a legend in the market. Truly uh, a legend, Caroline. Um, this is a man who was one of the original wildcatters and amassed a huge amount of oil and natural gas resources. Uh, those resources eventually became pioneer natural resources, which is one of the pure plays, one of the best pure plays uh, operating in the Permian today. Uh, he also became a huge uh, proponent of sort of weaning the U.S. off of OPEC oil. He also became a huge proponent of wind later on in his career, uh, as well as a huge proponent of natural gas. And his legacy will not be forgotten for a very long time. And that legacy is truly seen through this ETF. It was a Pickens Oil Response ETF, and that tracked oil companies. But then soon it became a renewable energy, low-carbon economy ETF. And that, to me, really exemplifies the transition that T. Boone Pickens has helped made uh, in the energy community. Yeah, such a symbol of the times, a change. A a sign of how times have changed. Talk a little bit more about his transition from oil wildcatter to someone who was such a supporter of wind and natural gas power, because that's a pretty sharp move. Yeah, he was really someone who just saw the future. I mean, really. Uh, I mean, in 56, uh, 1956, he started a company that would later become Mesa Petroleum, and that was one of the largest oil companies, independent oil companies in the entire world. Uh, he did gain a reputation of sort of trying to buy out a lot of companies. Uh, some were successful, some are not. That's how he earned his reputation as being a, a corporate raider, because in the meantime, some shareholders would profit off of the, this uh, uh, proposed takeover. Um, then, like I mentioned, he wound up selling Mesa to uh, Richard Rainwater, and that turned into eventually pioneer natural resources. Now, during that time, uh, he formed BP Capital Management, which was basically a huge hedge fund uh, that invested in oil companies all across the board, oil services as well. In that, he started to invest in natural gas companies and nuclear power companies uh, as well, um, like some Exxon or Suncor. So he sort of sort of played the whole energy field. He also was a believer in the beginning of peak oil, which means at some point, you're going to run out of oil uh, to produce and you have to then rely on other forms of energy. Now, obviously, he changed his mind on the advent of fracking, uh, in, particularly in shale in the U.S. However, that also sort of moved him uh, to wind earlier than most people would have thought. And we're talking 07, 08 in Texas. He had a huge push uh, for wind turbines. They proved to be relatively unsuccessful. There were lots of issues with that. Uh, in particular, say the grid wasn't really ready, transmission wires weren't ready, which is why they really couldn't take off. Uh, but he was one of the first to really sort of push that.